A woman walked into a building with a leopard. She was too arrogant. However, in Abu Dhabi, UAE, people were either rich or royal. It was hard to find a low profile here. There were a lot of ladies, luxury cars and local tyrants here, so a guy came up with the idea to create a fraud in this luxury place. Hello, everyone, I'm Harry. Today, let's take a look at the 2021 American comedy film, The Misfits, to see how to create a heist in the Middle East. That day, the FBI was looking for Richard at Schultz's prison. As a result, when they came to prison, he had disappeared. Checking the monitoring, it turned out that Richard got the key through the drone and successfully escaped from prison. It was not the first time Richard had escaped from prison. Finally, Schultz interrogated his cellmate. Only then did he know Richard's whereabouts. At this time, Richard had sat in the bar and had a drink. The prince was a rich man. How rich was he? He went international shopping every year, every day, he got a new watch. He just sat down, Richard approached and interacted with him. Richard pretended to accidentally spill the wine on the prince. While wiping the wine, he took the prince's wallet. But Richard just walked out of the hotel, the prince's bodyguard stopped him. They took the wallet back and beat him to the bones. Fortunately, the room card was still there. As a thief, Richard's goal was not a wallet. It was something in the prince's room. Taking a look around, he found a box of priceless watches on the faucet. But when he was just about to leave, the prince and his bodyguards came back to his room. Richard avoided the unexpected encounter perfectly. When his bodyguards came out, Richard, who was familiar with the directions, had taken the elevator to flee the scene. Richard was complacent, swaggering out of the hotel with sunglasses. A luxury car stopped to pick him up. Richard wondered who it was. Surprise! <laughs> Richard smiled bitterly. The FBI had come to the hotel to look for him. He felt that if he didn't run now, he wouldn't have a chance. After weighing up again and again, Richard could only get on the car. Hunters often appeared in the form of prey. It turned out that the identity of the prince was false. He was the leader of the theft gang. Three capable associates had been recruited. Ringo was good at unlocking. Wick was good at blasting and Violet was good at martial arts. Richard was the next master he wanted to recruit. The prince refused so many frauds to do a big crime. He wanted to steal a ton of gold from a private prison. The car sped away like a cheater on the road. The FBI couldn't catch up with them. The prince had a video of Richard stealing. Behind him was the pursuit of the police. Helplessly, Richard had to accept the deal and joined the prince's team. On the plane, Ringo said everyone was a rogue with good intentions. Now their common enemy was Schultz. Schultz teamed up with terrorists. Together, they open a private prison. Hiding in the dark, they made a lot of money. Hearing about Schultz's conspiracy, Richard was riled up with anger. But he was always a loner from the beginning, he didn't want to get into trouble. At this time, the prince started his temptation, saying there were $10 million in gold in prison. That sounded interesting. Richard listened to the plan closely. The gang hoped Richard, an expert in the prison escape, could sneak into Schultz's prison and cooperated with him to steal gold. That was a good idea, but the risk was also a weighing matter. Richard had just escaped from prison, so he didn't promise hastily. The prince told Richard the team welcomed him at any time, so if Richard changed his mind, just go find him. Richard hailed a cab. In UAE, taxis were luxury cars. Richard got in the car and came to the most advanced hotel in the area. Richard was not here to stay. Instead, he started his old business, looking around for his targets. A man with a branch watch caught his eyes. After a little awkward chat, Richard took the man's wallet. Just when he turned around and left, he bumped into a girl head-on. In just a few seconds, the wallet turned pink. Richard looked back, Hope was stealing from the man with her little tricks. Richard walked forward impolitely and interrupted them, then he argued with Hope about his wallet. The man on one side didn't want Richard to ruin his good deeds. He immediately drove Richard away. As a result, Richard directly said that Hope was his daughter. The man was embarrassed that he had to leave. The two were very happy to get together. Richard also asked about his daughter's purpose. Obviously, just like her father, Hope also came here to sneak things around. In the conversation, Hope brought up her mother. Now everyone was in harmony. Due to busy schedules, Hope said goodbye to Richard and left. Richard drank alone in the bar. He was upset that he was separated from his wife and daughter. This time, when he saw a wallet on the table, he didn't steal it. He decided to stop his business. The next day, Richard found the prince. Richard said that he could join at one condition. He would take half of the gold. But his companion told him the robbery was to stop terrorism and help the poor, so they couldn't take the gold for themselves. Wasn't it like doing a job with no salary? After that, Richard turned around and left. Then Hope appeared. It turned out that she was the big boss. She organized the operation because of the illegal business behind Schultz's private prison. She couldn't let him get away with it. She had to act for heaven. Facing his daughter's persuasion, finally, Richard promised to carry out the operation. They made a lot of preparations. Richard inferred from the clues the disguised laundry room was where the vault was located. As an expert, Richard wanted to direct this operation. As a result, Hope arranged camels for them. Though they were a little slow, they could avoid drawing attention. 
On the way, Richard's spring heart was rippling. He even flattered Violet with exaggerated words. Violet said that he was not a good man. I don't know where this old man got his confidence, such a witty mouth without bones. Hope seemed to have her mind somewhere else. Richard came forward and talked to her. It turned out that Hope was worried about her father's safety. She was also worried that he would leave without saying goodbye again. Richard didn't say anything, just letting his daughter have her moment with him. The next day, they arrived in the target city. Richard deployed. The prince was responsible for the transportation. Ringo was responsible for the list of outside contractors to the prison. They couldn't pry open the vault with an electric drill or airborne, so Hope needed new technology. Violet was responsible for monitoring. After that, the team disguised as civilians, coming to the hotel to monitor Schultz's transactions with terrorists. They found out that the terrorists wanted to exchange gold for cash. They would leave by plane tomorrow. So to prevent the deal from happening, Richard used his usual tricks to swap the suitcases. When the terrorist found out he was fooled, he called Schultz and confronted him. Schultz argued that his bodyguards must have stolen it. The terrorist gave Schultz three days to find out the one who stole his gold. All this was monitored by Richard and his companions. So the Grand Thieves must steal gold in three days. Richard deployed the operation. Ringo pretended to be a member of the Ministry of Public Health, who came to inspect the prison kitchen equipment. He told the warden that the equipment was unqualified and needed to be replaced. Scared of being involved, the warden could only compromise. The next day, the thieves disguised themselves as workers and sneaked into prison by transporting equipment. Taking advantage of the time to change equipment, Wick and Richard put on prison clothes and hid in the equipment. Unfortunately, the warden wanted to inspect the equipment, so he came to the kitchen and switched the power up. Richard in the oven was roasted. Fortunately, the witty Ringo told the warden the equipment needed to be cultivated. Just then, the power was turned off. Ringo stole the door card from the warden's pocket. Using the door card, Richard and Wick found out the location of the vault. They drugged the prison food. The uninformed inmates ate with relish. After a while, they all vomited. The whole prison was crammed into the infirmary. Soon, the infirmary was overcrowded. Schultz noticed it. He could only ask for help from an external hospital. Taking advantage of the chaos in the prison, Richard and Wick came to the toilet. The vault was directly below the toilet. Out of the blue, Wick danced to the music. After drilling a small hole, Wick took out the gas tank and said that he was about to blow this place up. Meanwhile, Hope had already arranged a car attached with bombs outside. After a detonation, both sides exploded at the same time, covering the sound from the toilet. When they got down to the vault, Wick manipulated the camera first. When Schultz came to check the surveillance, no abnormality was found in the vault. Richard and Wick started to load up the gold. Unfortunately, Schultz wanted to enlarge the picture. Then he found out that the image was still. When he came to the vault, the gold was long gone. Schultz ordered the guards to lock down the prison. As a result, from the mobile hospital bed, gold fell out. Schultz reacted immediately. He ordered the guards to stop the leaving ambulance, but they didn't find gold in it. At this time, Schultz noticed the disinfection personnel. Under the guidance, Schultz supposed the gold was hidden in the disinfection car. Unexpectedly, this was Richard's plan to lure the tiger away from the mountain. Schultz chased after the disinfection car with his guards. Ringo and the prince lured him to the desert. Soon, Schultz's reinforcements arrived. Both sides staged speed and passion in the desert. Due to excessive speed, Ringo's car was turned over. Don't panic, it's a piece of cake for the prince. He immediately adjusted and went on. He led Schultz and his crew to the trap. Ringo detonated a bomb to cut the enemy, but Schultz still caught up with them. Unfortunately, Schultz didn't see gold in the car. Where was the gold? It turned out that they smashed the sculptures in the prison and melted gold into liquid at a high temperature then poured it into the mold. Such geniuses. The real golden eagle was made. After that, Richard and his companions disguised as maintenance personnel. The gold was transported out. Schultz wanted to kill them. Just then, a group of extras from the prince pretended to be people from the army. Schultz used his last tactic, hope. But they caught the wrong person. It was Violet who was kidnapped. Violet was a master in martial arts. She quickly got rid of Schultz's fellowmen. Schultz was also in a crisis. He was handed over to the terrorist. You can't get my gold back, your life ends here. However, after the plan was completed, Hope, who inspected the goods, found it fishy. Richard wasn't in the car with them. There was no gold in the sculpture. It seems that Richard had her fooled again. Just when Hope was disappointed in her father, Richard opened the door and presented the golden carving. This time he fulfilled his promise to his daughter. Finally, the gold was donated to the United Nations Children's Fund. Millions of children could be saved with this money. The Grand Thieves enjoyed a comfortable life by the sea. This was the end of the film. That's all for today. I'm Harry. I'll see you next time.